This is Blair Underwood and you're watching Hollywood as I live and work. Blair, how do you produce a book? Ha <laughs> ha, very carefully. Now, Alice, you want me to talk to you or talk to the lens? Talk to me. Okay. Well, first of all, produce, well, producing is many different things. Sometimes there's line producing in the film and television world, which is all about the numbers and budgets and whatnot. There's executive producing, which that's ultimately what this is. Executive producing is pulling the elements together, doing the work to bring the project and the product to reality, to fruition. That's basically it. So for me, this was a character that I wanted to play. I was interested in playing. Uh, so I sought out two of my favorite authors who I respected tremendously. It was a one-stop shop. I wasn't like one of different authors. I wanted to work with Stan Reeve Dew specifically and Stephen Barnes. Well, The Night of the Heat is the second novel with uh, Tennyson Hardwick, starring Tennyson Hardwick, the uh, detective, uh, small-time actor and former gigolo who was the uh, hero of Casa Negra. Um, and we wrote that book with Blair because he had been involved with Tanana Reeve in the development of her book project, My Soul to Keep, over 20th Century Fox. And just over the years, we'd gotten to know him and like him very much. And, you know, we started talking about what else we might be able to do together. I do film and television. They write novels. So it really, it was really born out of the frustration of already having the rights to two of Tanana Reeve Dew's books that are set up at Fox Searchlight and seeing those movie projects, the movie versions of those novels, fledgling for so long, and I said, look, you know, instead of seeking out novels, and then buying the rights, and trying to spin them into films, why not, why not create the kind of film and the novel you want to, to see, the novel you want to read, and the movie you want to see. We're looking at the creation of uh, a continuing character who actually grows and changes over the course of the books, so we definitely have the long view. It's not an accident that we conceived of Casa Negra and In the Night of the Heat after we moved to Hollywood, because we are in the process of writing screenplays and pitching screenplays and trying to sell screenplays. So as we have learned the hard way, once you start dealing with the studio, you lose control. And this was all about control. We control everything about this story. We control everything about how we dispense of the rights. And that is very much a part of the project. We love them as books, but I think in all of our minds, they're not quite complete as books. To us, they're already movies. Because the concept was to spin these into movies right away, each novel has a cinematic title of a vintage film. Casa Negra, of course, Casablanca. In the Night of the Heat, a take on Sidney Poitier's movie, In the Heat of the Night. Um, uh, the next one is from Cape Town with Love, from Moscow with Love, a take off from that film. We basically spit ideas. You know, it started off with just throwing ideas around. What we knew, you, take, you start with the givens. The givens are, this is a story um, based on, inspired by this character named Tennyson Hardwick. What do we know about his past? Well, what, we, what we know is that he's a former gigolo. What we know is the relationship with his father has been strained uh, most of his life. His father is a highly decorated um, Los Angeles Police Department captain. We know that. Um, we know that Tennyson Hardwick has been an embarrassment to his father. We know that he did not know his mother, so his, his relationships with women throughout his life has, have been um, uh, complex to say the least. And we know that he's at a, a, at a juncture in his life when he's trying to find himself. He's trying to really redeem that past, but also trying to understand who he is and who, who is the man that he can become. He wants to be the man that, that his father really was not and who he certainly feels he is not. But he is better than he thinks he is, but he's striving to find that better person. So we carved out what the first 10 novels will be, and then we just attacked the first one, which was Casanegra. And in terms of the collaboration, in terms of that process, Tanana Reeve writes the first draft. Stephen uh, gives his notes on the second draft because they are the writers. That's what they do. And then I give my notes on the first. We did, I think the first book we did it three or four chapters at a time. I start from the heart space and move out to the action stuff. Whereas maybe, you know, Steve or Blair might sort of visualize the action scene without thinking quite as much about what is the heart space that led you to this place and led you to this scene. A tennis and Hardwick is precious to me. And it might seem like a bit of a contradiction, but because he's precious to me, I like to put him in precarious situations and see how he reacts. Tell me about how you 
have kept your longevity as long as you have and successfully as you have for, as you said, 24 years. We don't want to date you. No, I please. I still remember Crush Groove, but that's all good. No, no. <laughs> Listen, I love that. I started with Crush Groove. I'm proud to still be standing 24 years later and not just be surviving, but picking and choosing the projects you want to be involved in. I don't take that lightly, and that's also a, a gift, but it's also it's working hard. It's trying to be smart about your the choices you make and decisions you make, but it's also a blessing. You know, and I thank God for that every day. Um, in a nutshell, it's just being business minded and, and trying to look at the marketplace. What is the marketplace looking for? How do they want to cast me, per se, as an actor? Um, that's, just one, that's just one aspect of a career. So um, somewhere along the way, I said, you know, it'll make sense to create content. You can have it to all the technology you want. You can have a desire from an audience to want certain kind of products, films, movies, television. But somebody's got to create that content, and that's what a producer does, or a writer, or an actor. But um, I, I felt more empowered and more comfortable if I could somehow have a, a say in what I wanted to do in my future. So that's why when I use the word empowered, it's about having a say in your future.